to uh, the feedback link that uh, our technical team has provided in the chat uh, box. Um, so let me start by introducing our speaker today. I am uh, very uh, excited today to have our distinguished speaker, Dr. Junwei Ji from the University of Manchester, who will give a talk on the construction and application of a highly error-prone uh, plant organelle DNA polymerase to elevate uh, plastic mutation rate. And uh, I have to say that this is probably the most anticipated uh, talk, at least for me, because uh, Dr. Junwei is actually a friend of mine. So we used to work uh, in the same lab. He worked right beside me uh, in the lab and we work with the same supervisor. So it's, I'm, I'm beyond happy to see you again, uh, Junwei, uh, to, and also to listen to your talk today. Um, okay, a little bit about Dr. Junwei. Junwei um, so Dr. Junwei earned his uh, Bachelor in Agricultural Biotechnology from South China Agriculture University and also a uh, Master in Biotechnology and Enterprise from the University of Manchester in 2000, uh, 2013. And then he returned to China and served as a, a corn breeder for a seed company which targets the markets in South China and Southeast Asia. Uh, this role highlighted the challenges of climate change in which prompted, prom, prompted him to pursue a PhD in plant sciences, which he uh, successfully achieved in 2020. And his research led to the creation of the Buten Organelle Selection System or MOS, uh, which allows rapid and precise DNA engineering in plant chloroplasts and mitochondria. And uh, this technology has gained strong interest from uh, global seed companies. And currently, he is uh, dedicated to commercializing this technology with the support from the University of Manchester. Okay. Um, so um, let me talk a little bit just about the seminar uh, format. So we'll have uh, Dr. Jungwei to present for 20 minutes and then uh, followed by 10 minutes of Q&A session. So without further ado, um, I would like uh, to invite uh, Dr. Junwei to give his talk. Uh, Dr. Junwei, you have the floor. Thank you. Right, thanks, Fadli. So yeah, Fadli and I was lab mates and uh, he was two years senior than me and uh, he was actually the lab mentor taught me how to do molecular cloning. I still remember I was doing plus uh, mini prep uh, with he standing by my side and uh, we have a very high yield from the mini prep. Okay, so yeah, thanks for the warm introduction and uh, very happy to have me here today. And uh, I would like to share my uh, research, which is mainly from my PhD project. So my title today is the construction and application of a highly error-prone plant organelle DNA polymerase and use that to elevate plastids uh, plast mutation rate. Hold on. Yeah, so before I go into more details, so I just give you a little bit the background about uh, plant plastids, what we call plant chloroplast genomes. So um, these genomes are essential to plants, uh, and of course they contain uh, a lot of photosynthetic genes and other RNA and housekeeping genes. And uh, they are very small genomes. For chloroplasts, it's usually uh, on average across the plant species, usually around 150 kb. Compared to the nucleus, which usually you can have three gigabytes, for example, uh, this is very small genome. And it has a very high copy number. So per plant, uh, leaf cell usually contain can be up to 10,000 uh, chloroplast genome copies. And they have, even with such high copy number and the very dense um, DNA inside the very small containment, uh, they have very low spontaneous mutation rate, which can be even five to 20 folds lower than the nucleus. So with such a special genome, uh, we have very limited approach to study this genome. 
And that means for the DNA replication, repair, and the recombination system in this in the chloroplast remains unclear. So we do need a new approach to make a breakthrough for to revolutionize our understanding for the DNA maintenance system in the chloroplast. So actually, in the long time ago, possibly nearly 20 years ago, it's already a strategy has been used to study animal mitochondria genome, which is another uh, organelle containing uh, DNA and uh, maintain it uh, itself. What they did, they used a version, a mutator version uh, DNA polymerase to study the animal mitochondria genome. They make a proofreading uh, deficient polymerase gamma, which has a 20 fold higher error rate, and it express that in the in the in the mouse, and that can uh, elevate the mutation rate in the mouse mitochondria, and that leads to an early aging phenotype, and that actually revolutionized the, our understanding about. Uh, animal aging, and that's possibly because of the elevated mutation rates in mitochondria and the mutation accumulated through uh, wasting the time. So such strategy has not been used for the plants. So our original concept is, uh, can we make a plant-specific mutator DNA polymerase, and that's use that to specifically study the chloroplast genome? So the question will be, uh, Will a mutator DNA polymerase uh, can even elevate the mutation rate in the chloroplast? Because basically, we don't know how strong the repairing system and a lot of uh, the maintenance is. Uh, what, what's it going to be? What, is it going to be behave the same as animal or is different? And if we can make one that can potentially apply uh, applicable to a wide range of plant species, and that we can study the uh, in a more general. Uh, level of, of the DNA maintenance system for the plant's chloroplast genome and even for the mitochondria in the plants. So here actually this already uh, enzyme has been identified before, uh, which is called plant organelle DNA polymerase, we call it PARP. So this enzyme is uh, responsible for the DNA replication in plant chloroplast and mitochondria. And if you look at this uh, simple small phylogenetics tree, we did the analysis about the PARP gene um, distributed across the different plant species. For the POACE, uh, which mainly contain the cereals, rice and, uh, uh, and corn, and, uh, and the brassi, uh, such as uh, Arabidopsis and uh, Brassicus, they contain two PARP paradoxes. But for the uh, Solanaceae, they only contain tobacco, uh, potato, and tomato. They only contain a single copy of the pulp. So to have only a single pulp, that is make the, the Solanaceae, or we choose the tobacco one, which can make it uh, our ideal, ver uh, ideal candidate for making a mutated version of the pulp. Because we don't need to worry about if there's two copies of PAR, what if after dupli gene duplication, what if there's potential different function for different PARs? But if we only have one, we don't need to worry about that. So we chose the tobacco PAR to go further to make the mutated version. But another important information is that PAR uh, belongs to the polymerase A family which is a distant homologue to the polymerase 1 in bacteria. This actually gave us a very important information when we were looking for how exactly technically to make a mutated version of the palm. So here I would like to show how do we make the mutator version of the PARP, and uh, we gave its name anti-PARP, anti meaning Nicotiana tobacco, so tobacco PARP with uh, mutations in the different domain. So what we did is we make animal acid substitutions in the, uh, on the, uh, for, for the chosen animal acids. So we made two substitutions uh, in the proofreading domain which is located at the animal assays responsible for the uh, critical uh, critical for the function. Uh, we make the animal assay at the critical uh, position and that uh, deletes the proofreading function of the proofreading domain, which is the axon nucleus. 
But for the polymerization domain, we make uh, amino acid substitution near the critical amino acids, which means we want to uh, make a new property for this polymerization domain, but we don't want to delete or completely remove its polymerization function. So this is the design of our uh, mutator polymerase, and that is, uh, we use a reference from uh, previous scientists who made the mutator version of the polymerase one from the E. coli, which is made by Shinkai and Loeb in 2001. So as I mentioned before, the PARP and the polymerase one share distance homologs. And as you can see, the alignment here, they do share some uh, 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 a big portion of the similarity between the between the important uh, domain or motif in the in the polymerization domain and proofreading domain. And that's helped us a lot. So we made, we designed this uh, mutator pop, and we have to find a way to measure how good as a mutator, so how much uh, average can make when it's replicating the DNA. So to do that, we actually uh, designed a new selection system for the DNA replication fertility assay. So that is basically based on this plasmid here, we call it the PUM121. So for this plasmid, it contains uh, two uh, antibiotics resistance uh, genes. So one is uh, ampicillin resistance, which is uh, constantly expressed for allow you to select for the bacteria transformant. So the other uh, antibiotics uh, resistance is tetracycline resistance. But for this gene, it, the exp its expression is constantly suppressed by the C1 repressor gene. So the C1 repressor gene is constantly expressed and uh, suppress the expression of the tetracycline. That means any disruption of the C1 repressor that will release the expression of the tetracycline that will allow us to select for the uh, bacteria containing the mutation in the suppressor, C1 repressor. So what we did, we modified this plasmids by making a single strand region here, we call it gapped plasmids. So here is a single strand region. And then we use the recombinant, we purified the mutator path or other DNA polymerase and allowed it to replicate this single strand region. So if the polymerase uh, make any mutation during replication, we think the gap region will be on that, and that can cause loss of function mutations in the C1 repressor, then the bacteria containing this plasmid will be able to survive on the selection media, which contain both tetracycline and MPCD. The reason we make a design for that is like, we, this is a lethal selection, and actually, there's a other system which is based on the color selection, which is blue-white selection based on the LAXAT. But if you have done um, molecular cloning before, it possibly has the, uh, the, the experiments, like you have to distinguish the color, like dark blue, light blue, or white, and that is quite ambiguous. So that's the reason we designed this uh, lethal selection system, and we think this can give us much more certainty during measuring to measure the replication fertility more accurately. So the workflow for our assay is uh, um, include three steps. So first step, we create a gapped version of the plasmid as I introduced you uh, in the last slide. We make a single strand region for the plasmid, substrate, uh, substrate plasmid, and the uh, we use the Rosetta 2 string to um, uh, re to make to express the recombinant pops. Uh, we make different version of pop. We uh, mutator version and the mutator, uh, sorry, wild type version and the mutator version, and we purified it. Uh, uh, and then we use the purified polymerase to replicate the gapped plasmids to to do this assay in uh, in vitro. And we will have a library of the gap fields plus meat, and the, some of them must contain the mutations. And to find out what's the mutation, to isolate the mutant, uh, the mutation, we transform the library, replicated uh, plus meat library, into the E. coli bacteria. 
and uh, we select a single colony on the media containing both tetracycline and ampicillin. And then we do a uh, single sequencing for the single colonies. And uh, basically for each uh, type of the polymerase, we sequenced about more than at least 50 single colonies to allow us to uh, identify a number of uh, mutations. So from this assay, what we have is we have a number of uh, uh, mutation reviewed and uh, we find that most of them are base substitutions with uh, mixed with uh, a small portion of the indels. And we mapped all these mutations. If you let, look at the figure here, so each black small bar uh, indicates a mutation we identified and we mapped it onto the, onto the C1 repressor gene here. And uh, we distributed them uh, into different uh, versions of the recombinant pop. We have wall type, we have actual minus, actual minus meaning the pop only contains the proofreading deficiency, but the polymerization domain is still remain as a wall type. And we have a very strong mutator version which contains both uh, proofreading deficiency and the mutation in the polymerization domain. And as you can see, the substitution type is dominant uh, uh, among all the mutation types. So we also, based on the data we had uh, from, from the sequencing, we did a very uh, more uh, uh, delicate calculation for the absolute error rate for the recombinant pumps. So if you, uh, when we use the wall type as a reference, when we found by only deleting the proofreading domain, that can only increase the error rate by eight folds. And then surprisingly, that is comparable to the tag, to the PCR tag we use. The PCR tag actually also does not contain the proofreading domain. And uh, they, these two enzymes are as, has a comparable fertility for the DNA replication. But when we combine uh, the two mutations in the proofreading domain and the polymerization domain, we find the error rate increase a lot by 140 fold. And uh, so from this result, we were very happy and uh, we think we made a functional version of the mutator PARP, at least uh, based on the assay results uh, from in vitro. So the next step is to test uh, does the, this mutator PARP actually can actually work in plant? So we made a construct to express the mutator PARP uh, in tobacco, and we use the promoter, which is from the, the native wild type PARP promoter, because we want the mutator PARP to be regulated as the same as a wild type. But we replaced the targeting sequence uh, to uh, uh, a rubisco sponsor units to make it exclusively uh, only targeted to the chloroplast. Because if you remember, I mentioned before, the PARP is the enzyme responsible for both chloroplast and mitochondria DNA replication. That means it's still targeted to the two organelles. But in, uh, in this case, we only want to study the chloroplast, so we change the targeting uh, sequence. And we tested the targeting sequence with a GFP frozen protein, and the way uh, it's, it's the microscope uh, image shows it's exclusively targeted to the mitochondria, uh, targeted to the chloroplast. So, does the mutator part work in the plant plastids? And the answer obviously is yes. We have very striking phenotype showing in the plant, and uh, we see we were. Well, Except this like variegated plant, that means it's containing a lot of different mutations in the in the leaves, and uh, by by cell division and uh, sorting out the 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 different type of the mutation right together as a sector and showing uh, uh, on the leaf, and you can see this pigmentation uh, phenotype, and we are also able uh, we were also able to isolate different lines has different. Uh, pigmentation deficiencies with a range of different colors, green, white, pale green, variegated, and uh, green uh, look just look as a wild type. For different lines here, I'm showing uh, some of the data where we 
mapped the we use the next generation sequencing and also the third generation long range sequencing to identify the mutations across the whole uh, crop pass genome and we mapped them onto the onto the genome and we found the poly, the mutator polymerase is able to introduce mutations randomly across the whole genome some with the division of the cell and development of the plants, some mutation can become fixed, as you can see the dark blue bar, and some still remain as uh, mixed uh, status inside the crop uh, genome. And uh, they, uh, and this is a very new fun, uh, finding. We uh, is very different because the plants just grow as normal. Uh, I mean the the rates, the growth, for example, the growth rate is just as normal as a wild type. And that is not like the animal mitochondria uh, has the mutator power cause the early merger uh, phenotype, which is very different. And uh, to further an uh, analyze these plants will help us to identify like the re how does the repair repairing system responds to this kind of increase the mutation rate. So from this sequencing data, and here I, what I would like to show is the spectrum of the base substitutions. So if you look at this chart, we compared the type of um, base substitution uh, uh, type between the data we achieved from the in vitro assay with the silver repressor, and also the data we achieved from the tobacco chloroplast. And as you can see, it can introduce a mutation across all types of the base substitution, but with a strong preference for the AT and as well as AG and CT base substitution. But we do see the difference um, uh, in the in some types of the base substitution, for example, here AC, GC and uh, GT. And that's possibly implying the difference uh, DNA maintenance or repairing uh, system in the bacteria and in the plant crop parts, which we will investigate further. So I think uh, this is about the time limit I have. We do have a lot more interesting data, but I think I will just stop here and uh, give you some um, take home notes for, as a conclusion. So first uh, we find if you only remove the proofreading domain, uh, the activity of the proofreading domain, and that can only reduce the um, part replication fertility by eightfold. And if you combine the mutation in the polymerization domain and the proofreading deficiency, that can increase the average by 140 fold. And that's actually uh, probably indicates that the, the polymerization domain is responsible for the DNA replication and fertility much more than the, than, the, than the contribution from the proofreading domain. So, and we find an important uh, um, property for the uh, mutated path is mainly introduce uh, base substitutions uh, with a strong preference for the AT transversions. And, uh, and that can be potentially useful to change the genes or make any other mutations for a certain or a certain gene in the chloroplast or mitochondrial genome. And uh, so in the end, we can conclude that the mutator path is highly error prone and suitable for elevating the mutation rate in the chloroplast. So this is my presentation today. And I would like to thank my group members, uh, Dr. Lee Smart, Farah, uh, and Xin uh, Huang, and uh, thanks for the funding from the university. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Junwei. It was a very good presentation. I just want to say first that um, somehow we caught the notification uh, that there's only a few minutes left in the meeting. So just in case if the 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 you know the meeting suddenly stop, uh, the technical team will. Uh, you know, we will join again and then you can just join the link again to to to, to continue with the Q&A just in case if suddenly uh, the, the whole thing stop. All right. So the same um, thing, sorry. So if I kick it out, I just join with the same. Link yeah, just again. join the, this. Okay. Um, uh, yes, yes. OK, so um, anyone? Uh, so I, I would like to 
open the floor for, for questions. Anyone who have any questions? So um, perhaps while waiting for others, I can ask, just ask one question first. Um, so Junwei, when you talk about this experiment, as someone from outside of this uh, research, when they look at your uh, research, they, they see that you are trying to increase the mutation rate. How do you tell them why do you need to do that? Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> so when you say someone outside, uh, okay, um, yeah, so initially, uh, we got questions which was quite uh, harsh. It's like, why do you want to increase the mutation rates by creating a special enzyme? Why don't you just use a chemical or radiation to increase the uh, mutation rates? But I mean, to be able to specifically study the DNA maintenance for the for the plant organelle, you do need a very precise methods to increase the mutation rates within that content, containment. So that is the original purpose we create this mutator polymerase is to allow us to accurately increase the mutation rate in the chloroplasts in the mitochondria. And that can just lead to, we think this is going to lead to new findings about how plants maintain response to the mutations in these uh, important organelles. So your focus is not actually trying to increase the uh, diversity of the, the genome, or you are more on uh, uh, finding out the resistance of the plant, is it? Uh, so if you call it resistant, yeah, possibly. So the resistance uh, against the increase the mutation rate, that's more scientific interest. But what I'm showing today is rather quite early stage for our project. Actually, by now we have already uh, find a system that could allow us to restrict the mutation region within a very small window, like for only 30 bases, and uh, we can locate it to any specific gene in the chloroplast or mitochondria. That means we can diversify uh, a particular a region on the gene, and that possibly can lead us to identify a new trait in the plant. So this is what we are doing at the moment. Yeah. OK, I think I think that's it from me. Uh, anyone else who have any burning questions? Okay, we have one from uh, Dr. Najia. Um, hello, Dr. Junwi. Thank you for the presentation. Um, just out of curiosity, um, this kind of mutation, does it happen naturally? And if it does, um, you know, considering the evolutionary of plastic, uh, does it happen in higher or lower um, plant kingdom? Uh, yes, so uh, first of all, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, uh, the mutation rate in the plant of mouse, mitochondrial chloral, is uh, about, can be up to 20 fold lower than the nucleus in nature. So in a way for the phylogenetic scientists, actually, because the genome from the plant of now, chloroplast and the mitochondria is very conserved, uh, even across different plant species, they even so they even use the genome from the plant organelle for the gene phylogenetic analysis. So that means it's quite rare you can identify a mutation uh, in the chloroplast mitochondria under a natural condition for a plant. So in the past, people were trying to get mutations in the plant organelles using chemicals or radiation and actually people do find something one of the most possibly quite famous one is um, to create a mutation in a PSB, a PSBA gene which is a photosynthetic gene in the chloroplast and that can lead to a, a herbicide resistance and that has been used for a very long time but that is the only example you can have and to identify that you need a very long time and, uh, uh, for example, 10 years to isolate that mutation. 
and that is a major barrier to study the plant organelle genome. So here comes the reason we create this uh, mutator path is to allow people to in create mutation re very rapidly. Uh, for example, in a month, you will be able to isolate the organelle mutant. Comparing to other methods like chemical or radiation, you need many years and you need a very large scale field uh, growing plants to isolate the mutant. So that is uh, the original concept for our research. I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, uh, you did. Thanks. Uh, can I ask one more question? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Your ta your you targeted the um you you target the uh it's a nuclear encoded but targeted to plastic, right? So in the uh in the uh, tobacco plants that you showed earlier, uh, we indeed it's very clear the there's a patches of green. Right. So um, I just wonder um, this would it because I, I, I assume it would cause uh, aging process quicker with the mutation because of the lack of pigmentation, I guess. So um, I just maybe you can uh, give uh, a better clarification on that sense. Yeah, yeah, sure. So actually, um, because when you express this uh, mutator pop in the plant and uh, as a multiple cellular organism, and uh, when it's during its development, there's uh, a lot of complicated uh, things happening during the growth of the plants. And uh, what we see is uh, for the lines for the plants, we isolated showing this uh, pigmentation. If it can be, if it can survive in the soil, even though it's uh, very gated, the growth rate is not impaired significantly. At least we didn't tell. But for the plants showing, like I showed, white leaf, purely white leaf, you cannot transfer them on the, to the soil. We have, to, we can only uh, uh, have it in the in vitro on the media with uh, sucrose as a carbon source to sustain it to growth because it has it just cannot uh, do any photosynthesis so you cannot move it onto the plant but actually we find the white one at this stage what i present today is more useful because we find the white one actually contain much more num a, a much a, a bigger number of the mutations and that will allow us the first to see what is the spectrum of the mutation types. Second is we can see what's the limit of the Kropos genome can have, uh, what's the limit number it can have. So the maximum, the biggest number we have is, uh, I think it's 80 base substitutions throughout the very small genome, which is only 150K. And the, all these are very uh, new findings to, to people never seen before. And uh, furthermore, for this type of plants, we are going to analyze what's for other genes responsible for the uh, DNA, uh, DNA repair system, what is happening to those, why, why they are not repairing these mutations. So they will be all very scientifically interesting things to, to study. I think this is a long answer. I hope that's yeah, your yeah. question, yeah. Yeah, but um, you know the 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 plants look beautiful. <laughs> it's like very uh, yes, plants yes. Uh, people do say that actually. Uh, we do want to because, as I mentioned, now we are be able to fix the mutation to a certain position of the genome. That is more like gene editing, but it's a new way to do that. And people do we think yes, maybe we can create some beautiful plant and the cell is, but uh, we find in nature is already, there's already a lot. And uh, and uh, actually that's, uh, we call it very gut monster, uh, that for example, but we found that is a different mutation compared to our, ours. And uh, and uh, and uh, we find this uh, can be can be different. So what you're seeing in nature, those variegation possibly have a completely different mechanism to create the variegation compared to our mutant plants. I see. Okay, okay. I, 
Yeah. Um, I see Dr. Fikri. Uh, maybe have one final question. Yeah. Hi, uh, Dr. Junwe. Thank you for your um, talk. Um, really <clears throat> interesting topic. So my question is, you guys can hear me, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, very clear. So my question, so one of my questions was answered uh, by uh, through your uh, uh, elab elaboration just now. Um, so now I'm just uh, curious, so uh, I'm trying to understand that uh, when you get the variegated phenotype and also the totally white phenotype, it's because of the absence of the chloroplast, right? So uh, it's, no, the chloroplast is still there. We did so, uh, DNA blood, thousand blood to confirm mm. the chloroplast uh, uh, DNA still there, and that mm. uh, makes it possible to do sequencing, right? If there's no chloroplast, we cannot Correct. do any sequencing. Mm. And uh, and uh, the reason to lead to the white phenotype at the moment, we believe, rather than the high number of the mutations, but it's more about where the mutation hit. Mm. Which gene got hit? If it hits to an uh, important gene, for example, Rubisco large, large subunit, or mm. some some um, gene like uh, uh, RNA polymerase, which mm. is essential for the chloroplast to synthesize uh, to mm. to to uh, transcription in the chloroplast, that is very has been reported before. This mutants can cause uh, pale green or white phenotype, and we find this mm. mutation does hit those genes. So I to see. be able to hit these genes, maybe you need a, a, a base threshold number of mutations mm. to be mm. able to cover that gene. But of course, maybe if you have only one mutation and that's just hit that gene, that's mm. possible, but we haven't identified such mutant. I see. So, and, and uh, I imagine that uh, uh, the plastic, oh, I, I'm not sure. Do uh, the plastic genome also has their uh, has their own um, DNA repair uh, proteins uh, as well? Uh, yeah. Uh, um, are you aware of that? I, I would say so. They have their own DNA repair system, mm, but mm. most of the enzyme is from the nucleus. Mm. So during the evolution. The, this these genes has been transferred into the nucleus, mm. and the, now its nucleus express this DNA repairing gene and the target it to the chloroplast or mm, mitochondria. So if you want to start there, you study the gene from the nucleus already. I see. So in order, I mean, so looking at the variegation, different level of uh, variegation that you can see, how what is your comment or what do you think? Would be uh, could could the variegation um, uh, originated from the different balance of mutation and also repair in in different samples? Like if maybe yeah. you get more more green because you have more repair system mechanism activated stuff like that. Yeah, uh, that's an int uh, interesting question. So I don't think because as uh, we think individual plant. Because as I mentioned, all the DNA repairing, uh, so we call it RRR, so mm -hmm. replication, repair, recombination. So those genes to control the chloroplast genome are mainly from the nucleus, including mm -hmm. PARP. So throughout the individual plants, I don't think there will be different uh, level of this, the strength of this system expressed in different mm -hmm. cells. I would think it should be the same throughout the mm. whole plants and the organs. And the reason you see the different um, phenotype and sectors on the leaf mm. is because the, du during the plant cell division, the distribution of the chloroplast into the daughter cells is random. Mm. So in the mm. end, in the end, if uh, there's a possibility in one cell, one daughter cell gathered more of a single type of the mutation, and the other mm. one contain much less mutation. If this two daughter cell capture divide, dividing, and in the end, it's visually present mm. as sectors on the leaf. So that's why you see this uh, different colors I on see. a single leaf. So mm. just to extend from there, the possibility to isolate single mutations from all these random mutations is mm. to cut this variegated leaf 
and it regenerates them again on the medium. And then you have a possibility to have individual plants containing very few number of mutations. Yeah. I see. Um, all right, I see. Um, maybe one last question. Um, um, I'm just curious, how do you control uh, how many um, pop mutant pop enzymes that you introduce? I mean, it's working in the uh, in your uh, transgenic plants. So, 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 so mm. as the for this study, uh, what I present today, I we didn't control it. So we use a promoter which is identical to the wild type. Pop. Mm. So, so from our Western blood analysis, so even the wild type pop is expressed at a very, very low level. Mm. Much lower, like it takes me very long time to be able to have a Western blood to very, to uh, yeah, very difficult. So it's very low level. So what I didn't uh, show today is from the in vitro study, the mutator pop is able to compete with the wild type. So that is important because when mm. we uh, express the mutation part in the plants, it has to be able to compete with the wild type. And mm. we find that is, uh, is a very important property. And uh, maybe that could be, we call it dosage effects. What do you mm. I mean? Uh, do I mean by that, for example, you use if you use agrobacterium transformation, so usually you get the for the T0 transgenic mm. transformant, you get single copy, right? Mm. Uh, which is heterozygous. Yep. But when you um, self it and have the next generation, you can have might have homozygous, which has mm. two copies. For tobacco, is uh, is a four copy uh, nuclear copy mm. plants. So we find possibly there's a dosage effects comparing like heterozygous plants mm. has a lower mutation rates than the homozygous, but actually I didn't see much difference. Mm. We do have a, a assay to, to, to test that, but actually we don't see much difference. So we have all no right. we, we have no conclusion for that yet. Yeah. Mm. All right. I think that's all for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vicky and others who ask questions. Uh, as I said earlier, your presentation today is very uh, insightful. And to me personally, uh, it's like walking down the memory lane because I can actually <laughs> recognize all the variegated plants and the constructs uh, that you showed. So I wish that I wish all the best to you. And I'm sure you you will get success in whatever that you will try to apply and, and uh, get yeah, in the future. Thanks. Before we finish, um, I would like to ask for uh, everyone to uh, maybe op turn on the camera so that we can get uh, uh, take a picture a screenshot before we end the session yeah and dr jun we can you go back to your uh, first uh, title slide so that we can oh yes yes picture. that's a good idea uh, yes. okay. the first slide yeah yep okay Let me change the view to uh, speaker. Focus on content. Together more. Okay, together more. No, no, this one. All right. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, again, All right, thanks, uh, Junwei. Uh, I hope to see you again in the future. And thanks, everyone, for yeah, joining hopefully. us. Um, Hope to see you all again in the next uh, session. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Yeah.